The next speaker is going to be Harish Maniya. He's from Queen's University, Belfast. He had worked with me for his PhD, and then now he's a lecturer in chemical engineering in, in Belfast. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Professor M. M. Sharma, Professor J. B. Joshi, Professor Pandit, Dr. Marshalkar, Professor Yadav, all the distinguished guests and friends of Professor Sharma and my colleagues and uh, students at UDCT, at ICT now. I'm very grateful and thankful for giving me an opportunity to talk today. It is a very unique occasion. I saw the morning session on uh, YouTube link, uh, which I received. Uh, uh, I'm based currently in Queen's University in Belfast in UK, but my association with UDCD goes back to 1998. I did my PhD from UDCD with Professor G.D. Yadav in 1998 until 2002. So I'm going to talk today about some of the research which I have been learning throughout the years and which we are carrying out in my research group now. And we are looking at the design of the new catalysts and new chemical processes. And uh, my interest has always been at the molecular level, what happens around the active site, the metal nanoparticle, the environment around it, how the molecules arrange around it. So we look at the liquid structure around it, the absorption of the molecules at the active site, and how they react and how we can control the product. So through this knowledge of the insights at the molecular level, then we are able to tune the products and the selectivity, intensify, increase the reaction rates, or perform the reactions at mild reaction condition. So I'm going to go, can we go to the next slide, please? Then you'll have to start sharing slides, Harish. Uh, okay, just I thought you already had the slides on. Yeah, okay. Sorry about <laughs> that. Uh, right, so I will be looking at what are the key design parameters in any chemical process. And as you can see in the schematic below, we have got uh, the catalyst support which looks in green, then I have put uh, active metal site uh, in orange with the promoter in yellow, and the solvents and the reactant molecules floating around the active site. And uh, I will be taking on each one of these uh, parameters individually and try to show that every parameter is a key parameter which we can use it as a tool to design the process to achieve the selectivity or perform the reactions under reaction conditions, which we would like to do that. So going to the next slide, I'm going to talk about uh, some of the case studies, which are going to be based on hydrogenations mainly in the liquid phase, and uh, some of the molecules like aldehydes and ketones, adenes, amides, fatty acids, and triglycerides, etc. So can we please go to the next slide? The first one I'm going to talk about is starting with a catalyst support. And in this way, we're talking at a support which I started using, working on during my PhD. This is the manganese oxide, it's a porous molecular sieve, and uh, which we can then put uh, metal nanoparticles on it and uh, do wonderful reactions with it. Uh, next slide, please. Go on. This is uh, the support, this is manganese oxide, this is how it looks like. It is. Uh, two by two tunnel structure. It is uh, microporous in nature. It's made up of uh, octahedral units from manganese oxide. And uh, the TEM image at the center shows the nano rod morphology, which is of the length of 100 to 400 or 500 nanometers with a surface area of around 100 to 150 square meters per gram. On the right, it shows the lattice structure, which is optimized through the DFT calculation, the density function theory calculations. On the next slide, yeah. I've got the reactions here. So we have got a couple of examples here on this slide. We have uh, ketoisoprone and senamaldehyde. And we can use this manganese oxide on its own as a catalyst. Uh, we don't need platinum or palladium here. Just using manganese oxide, we can do the hydrogenation selectively. In this case, with ketoisoprone, with manganese oxide, we can get 96% selectivity to reduction of the carbon-carbon double bond. And if we have uh, platinum or manganese oxide, the reaction is faster, selectivity is still towards levodiron. If we change the support to alumina and we have platinum on alumina, then we can have the reduction of the carbonyl group. The other example is a cinnamaldehyde. In case of 
cinnamaldehyde in the hydrogenation of the cinnamaldehyde using the same catalyst platinum on OMS, we take out selectively the carbonyl group. So here is uh, something important to notice. Using the same catalyst, the same reaction conditions, we have completely opposite selectivities. In cinnamaldehyde, we take out the carbonyl group, and in ketoisoprone, we take out the carbon-carbon double bond. Uh, if you go to the next slide, please. Yeah. So this is uh, why it happens. So we did uh, temperature program desorption to follow the adsorption of the molecule from the surface, and ketoisoprone adsorbs very weakly. Cinnamaldehyde adsorbs very strongly. The, in the figure eight, the blue line, the big blue peak here, is adsorption of cinnamaldehyde on platinum. The next black line is the adsorption of cinnamaldehyde on manganese oxide. Ketoisoprone adsorbs very weakly. It doesn't show strong adsorption at all. So that is the reason we have different selectivities. Adsorption strength, the take-home message here is adsorption strength determines the selectivity. And the hydrogen dissociation determines the rate or the activity in the reaction. So if we go to the next slide, please. Uh, yes. We did uh, density functional theory calculations with Professor Pajan Hu's group, and uh, we demonstrated that the activation energy barriers for dissociation of hydrogen were very high on the surface of manganese oxide. However, if we had water present, the the activation uh, the activation energy barriers dropped from 1.8 or 1.9 electron volts to 0.1 electron volts in presence of water. So dissociation is likely to be water assisted process. If we go to the next slide. And, and we did this uh, evidence through experiment as well. We did this reaction in the absence of water in anhydrous condition, and we didn't see any conversion. So water is necessary to get this reaction done. If we go to the next slide, please. Yes. So this is a quick example of promoter. In this case, we are using sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide as an additive. And uh, we can see that uh, by adding a promoter, we can enhance the reaction rate and selectivities further from manganese oxide or octahedral layered material. In presence of rational hydroxide, we had higher selectivities. If we go to the next slide, please. Yes. So here we are changing the reaction, changing the process from hydrogenation of aldehydes and ketones to hydrogenation of difficult molecules. So these are molecules like amides or acids, fatty acids, and triglycerides. And uh, traditionally, the copper chromite or copper zinc catalyst require very high temperatures and pressures like 200 degrees, 100 to 200 bar hydrogen pressure. Under such stringent reaction conditions, it is difficult to control the selectivity of the desired products. So we wanted to achieve this under very, very mild conditions. So if we go to the next slide, please. Yes. So we did uh, predicted which catalyst we should use by using the DFT calculations. From DFT calculations, we looked at the mechanism for hydrogenation of the carbonyl group of the amide. And uh, by looking at the activation energy barriers of each step involved in the reaction and screening through a number of different metals, we came up with a combination of platinum and rhenium. If we have the two metals together in synergy, then we can do this reaction very easily at low activation energy barriers. So if we go to the next slide, please. Yes. Then we made these catalysts, uh, we optimized these catalysts in lab by working through a range of different supports and different uh, metal precursors and different impregnation techniques. So this is the outcome of that. By using platinum on titania and platinum medium on titania, we were able to achieve the direct hydrogenation of the triglyceride to alkanes in one step at 20 bar hydrogens and 100, 130 degrees temperature. It's possible to go even lower, but that will slow the rate down. If we go to the next slide, please. Yes. This shows the range of vegetable oils which we hydrogenated, and in all the cases like palm oil, sunflower oil, olive corn, soybean, coconut, and rapeseed oil, we could achieve high selectivity to alkanes and high conversions, and using monometallic catalyst, we could get high selectivity to alcohols. Going to the next slide. Yes. Now this is a different story. In this case, uh, we are talking about the role of the solvent here. It's a multi-phase reaction, and we are using ionic liquids here, and this is a ionic liquid phase dispersed in the organic solvent, which is divital ether phase, and we use the sodium borohydride as a reducing agent instead of hydrogen. If we go to the next slide, please. Cinnamaldehyde again 
people use as a model substrate. Normally, uh, we require uh, noble metals for hydrogenation, but in case of uh, using sodium borohydride, we were able to do this without using any metal. So if you go to the next slide. Yes. Uh, on this, we have got a control experiment in the table here. The first one blank is without using any ionic liquid. We could get only with uh, sodium borohydride only 5% conversion. However, when we used uh, phosphonium diacyanamide based ionic liquid, we could get very high conversions, close to 83, 84% with 97% selectivity to cinnamon alcohol. And if we use the cobalt substituted diacyanamide, phosphonium diacyanamide ionic liquid, we could even go to 100% conversion. However, the selectivity dropped down slightly. If we go to the next uh, slide, that's the summary of the work done for the ionic liquids as the reaction medium. It increases the mass transfer, that is why the reaction rates are faster, and it also helps to stabilize the nucleophilic borohydride ion in presence of the charge, ionically charged uh, network of uh, cations and anions present in the ionic liquid. And uh, if we go to the next slide, that shows the reproducibility or the reusability of the reduction of the cinnamon they are using phosphonium based diacinamide based ionic liquids. The repeat use, the reusability, the recycle of the ionic liquids show even faster reactions and uh, comparatively higher selectivities than the fresh ionic liquid. So we did that uh, by pre-mixing the ionic liquid with cinnamon behind and then adding sodium hydride to see that uh, the mass transfer was really fast and we could actually get a very high reaction rates here. So it was it is showing good reusability. We go to the next slide. Yes. So this is solvent less study just in presence of ionic liquid without any diabetal ether. The reactions are even faster. Within 10 minutes, we can go to 100% conversions with 100% uh, selectivity to cinnamon alcohol. And if you go to the next slide, uh, yes. that shows a range of different substrates that were uh, studied uh, using the ionic liquids and sodium borohydride cocktail for reductions. This has got cinnamon diacetylsaffron, citral, cyclohexidone and transphenyl cupidinone. All of these cases, we were able to achieve higher conversions and higher selectivities to desired products if you want it. If we go to the next slide. Yes. The next slide is solventless condition for the substrate study and under solventless conditions, the reaction rates were much faster than using the solvents. If we go to the next slide. Yes. It again shows uh, the ionic liquid uh, in solvent less condition, but this time it is a cobalt based ionic liquid. And with cobalt based ionic liquid, the selectivities were even better than the without cobalt one with the diacinamide one. So it is possible to tune the ionic liquid, increase the solubility, and increase the mass transfer, and the higher selectivities can be achieved. And since it is a magnetically magnetic ionic liquid, it is easier to separate as well. So the last next slide is uh, the summary of this work done, which shows that the phosphonium diacinamide based ionic liquids and cobalt ionic liquids are very good for reduction at uh, ambient conditions at room temperature for selective hydrogenations, and they, they can be recycled very easily. The last slide, the next slide, is the acknowledgments. Uh, because uh, whatever work we have done is a big team effort and a lot of people have contributed to this work and industries have contributed. So Professor Hardaker, Professor Kajin Fu helped us for DFT calculations and uh, a lot of students like Amin and Thiego and Christopher Ormandy, they worked on these reactions and uh, postdocs were Laura Marti and Catherine Kraut, they have contributed to this work. Also, the funding agencies for EPSRC, Mr. Nai, Johnson Mackey for putting money into it. And thank you to all of you for your kind attention and the organizing committee for giving me the opportunity to talk today.